October 2008. I leave Pensacola and come to Panama City with my son. We left a situation in Pensacola where we had no friends, no family, and no one to turn to. My ex-husband had taken the keys off of my key ring while I slept, so I could not get away while he was at work. He knew that I wanted a divorce. He knew that it was over. He had a serious drug problem, crystal meth. So I decided to take my son and go after my grandmother said something to me that would change my life. She said, you know, Ashley, if your husband gets caught with crystal meth, they're going to take that child away from both of you. That hit me so hard. I had never thought of it like that. And on top of a lot of other personal issues in our relationship, I have a zero tolerance policy for crystal meth. You know, people that get on that stuff, you know, 90% of people that get on it can never get off of it. And it's sad and it destroys lives. And I refuse to let that happen to my child. So I packed us up and I came to Panama City. January 2009. I was served papers for divorce through my ex-husband's lawyer. A hearing for temporary relief was set for February 2009. So we went to court in February. I had no lawyer. I did not realize that custody would even be discussed. I didn't realize that witnesses would be called. I had no idea what temporary relief even meant. I thought it was something financial. Uh, so I went to Pensacola. And I had no representation, no witnesses, um, nothing. My husband was there with his lawyer and two teachers from my son's school, one of whom he dated, who used to attend football parties at his house and go to barbecues. And he referred to her as Hot Donna while we were still together. She came in and testified that I tried to pick my son up from school one day intoxicated, and I was so messed up that I could barely walk and barely talk, and my eyes were red and glossed over. Yet, I never heard anything about this until the day of that hearing, and if that were true, she would not be legally allowed to release my son into my custody in that type of condition. So, on that day, I believe that judge decided right then and there that I was what they said I was. So on February the 24th, 2009, they gave sole custody to my ex-husband. July 2010, we returned to court for a final hearing. I bring in a mountain of evidence that my ex-husband was in fact using drugs in our home with our son. I bring in a witness who was a friend of my ex-husband's, not a friend of mine, who was participating in an orgy at my ex-husband's home when my son walked out of his bedroom and witnessed a bunch of naked people in his living room having sex with each other high on meth and he was ushered back into his room and the door was locked. Mm. These are the types of things that go on in the home while my son is there. So I had one of his friends who was disturbed by that who came in to testify about that and it seems like uh, that was no big deal. I brought in a videotape of my ex-husband using drugs. My ex-husband admitted that it's him on the tape using the drugs. I have a third party witness who saw him drive us off the road with my child in the car on Mother's Day. I had expert witnesses, child psychologists, directors of Autism Center, private investigators, police officers that arrested my ex-husband all came in to testify against him. My husband brought no witnesses in on his behalf and still maintains sole custody of our nonverbal autistic child.